It's not as strong. I used to hate super ghouls and ghosts. I saw it as a complete waste of time because it was completely unfair. How the hell are you supposed to play this thing? Look at this shit. Your guy jogs along painfully slow while everything else flies around him ten times faster to the point that the game would choke itself into slow motion. How are you supposed to keep up? I couldn't even get past the first level. You know, there's a scene in the first Wayne's World movie where Noah Vanderhoff, you know, from Noah's Arcade, he's talking about this arcade game that he's coming out with. It's purposely difficult to the point that it's literally impossible to get to the second level. Like we have a new game called Xantar. Xantar is a gelatinous cube that eats warriors in a medieval village. And every time it eats a chieftain, you ascend to a higher level. The beauty part is you can't get to the next level, so the kids keep coughing up quarters, you know? <laughs> This is how I saw Super Ghouls and Ghosts. I thought it was a scam. I wondered if there even was a next level. It was bullshit. But, you know what? After a while, I found out that I'd been looking at it the wrong way. Super Ghouls and Ghosts is a different kind of platformer. I had been approaching this game like Mario or Castlevania, you know, just plowing ahead, guns blazing, jumping around, running as fast as I could, and just reacting to everything. And let me tell you, that approach will get you your ass handed to you every single time. Super Ghouls and Ghosts takes a lot of time and patience. And I mean a lot of time and a lot of patience. Here's a good example of what I mean. I gotta jump over this pit while this dog runs underneath me, but I keep getting hit here. So let's try it again. I'm gonna jump up and jump back. I'm gonna jump straight up. Nope. Ugh. I'm gonna jump up and jump back. And I gotta jump straight. Yep. Ah, there we go. And we gotta jump over. And then we gotta take out this guy. And then we're gonna get hit and die. Damn it. Each level is like a puzzle. I guess that'd be my best way to describe this game. It's like a puzzle platformer. You have to time everything just right, make every jump and double jump just right, anticipate each enemy's moves just right. It takes a bit of memorization. It's like a test. Even if you're off just barely, you're fucked. What makes this game forgiving, though, is that you basically get unlimited lives and continues. So, it can take you one try, it can take you ten tries, it can take you one hundred tries, it can take you as many tries as you want. The game gives you no excuse but to keep going. And eventually, you reach a point where you think, am I gonna let this game beat me? Hell no, I'm not. And so you forge ahead. Now, is that considered fun? Does that sound like fun to you? Well, it's, it's definitely not the same kind of fun as Super Mario World, Super Castlevania 4, or, or other platformers, but damn, it's an experience, and it's a tough, fair challenge. It's definitely different. Now, if you're watching this, and you've written it off because it's too hard, I can tell you firsthand, I sucked at this game. I was freaking terrible. I could barely get to the first level boss. But, you know, one weekend, I decided enough was enough. I'm gonna get good at this game, I don't even care. And then, you know what? I kinda did. I got decent at it. And as a result, this is one of my favorite Super Nintendo games now. Yeah, it's relentlessly difficult, even on the beginner setting, but it really is a totally different kind of experience than any other platformer. Granted, it is not for everyone, and it's tempting to quit after like 5 or 10 minutes, but just keep at it and you'll be rewarded. Anyway, it's not just the difficulty that makes the game fun. The graphics, the music, and the overall presentation are what help make this game as addicting as it is. The music is fantastic and really adds a lot, and it just looks cool. There isn't another game that looks like this. It's definitely unique. Just one glance at the screen and you immediately know you're playing Super Ghouls and Ghosts. I love the rotating towers, even though those bats are such a bitch. And the way this level rotates is cool as hell too, even with those annoying big guys that float up beneath you. Speaking of those guys, it's interesting that the levels aren't so tough, but the bosses for the most part are really easy, it's all disappointingly so. Like I struggled through this whole tough ass level just to beat that lightweight? Come on. Where this game loses major points with me is at the very end of the game. Of course, just like the NES predecessor, Super Golden and Ghosts makes you beat the game twice. But not only that, you have to beat the final boss with a certain weapon, the Goddess Bracelet. And let me tell you, this weapon sucks out loud and makes it virtually impossible to get through the last level, let alone beat the final boss. It's just such a pain in the ass weapon, especially if you're like me and you use the bow and arrow the whole time. And plus there's a timer, and you gotta get through this whole stage and beat this guy twice with this shitty weapon. There's difficult, and then there's bullshit. That's some bullshit. But yeah, don't be put off by this game's difficulty. Like I said, I used to hate this game until finally I said fuck it. I'm putting in the work, I'm putting in the time, I'm gonna get good at this goddamn game. And I sorta of did. And I only threw my controller about 479 times. 